And so that brings us to one of the next representation of the finite state machine, and that is a tree diagram. So a tree diagram, I can find a way of visualizing what's going on as time goes on. So it has the same principles as the state diagram, and really it's another state diagram, but this state diagram, instead of being something that turns in on itself, is one that uh, develops with time. So we have to start somewhere, and you can see there are labels here about what the state is. So I'm assuming that we start at state A, which is start with the registers set to zero. And then here, if I start at A, there's a transition that goes back to A, and there's a transition that goes to B. So in the tree diagram, there's a down, which is when a one occurs, and I use up for when a zero occurs. So input bit zero go up, input bit one go down. So if an input is zero, I go up, well, I have to stay at A, at the same state. But if I go down, I go to B. So I get this. So now I have two possibilities, state A or state B. You know, just like in this case, if I'm at A, then I can stay at A, or I can go to B. So I, I know what I'm going to do every time I have an A, I'm going to branch between A and B. Now what happens when I have a B? Well, I could go to C, or I can go to D. So in my uh, tree diagram, here I am at B, and if I get um, a one bit, then I'm going down to D. If I get a zero bit, then I go up, and that's C. And when I have these transitions, just like before, next to the transitions between B to C, there's this code word, one zero. So again, in the transition between B and C, I again write the one zero. So you can see here, when I'm at A, I go up to A, down to B, just like I did here. Up to A, down to B, zero, zero, or one, one. Here it is again, zero, zero, or one, one. And I build my tree in that way. And of course, it's getting denser and denser and denser as time goes by. But uh, you can see that it's basically the same information as here, same, same uh, quantity of information. It's just representing it in another way. Why? So that we can track the behavior in time. So let's take the same example, which I stepped through with you for the uh, finite state machine. And now I'm going to step through it with you for the um, tree diagram. So the first bit, first of all, I started A, assumption I started state A, and the first input bit was a 1. Remember, 1, go down. So I go down, and when I go down, the output is um, state uh, 1, 1 here, and the state is B. The next bit is 1, so again, I go down. Uh, the next bit is a 0, so now I branch up in this tree. The next transition is a 1, I go down again. Another 1, I go down again. And now I can look back, and I have traced through here all of my transitions, and I can go back and say, well, in each transition, what was the code word? So the first transition gave me code word 1-1. One, one. The second transition gave me code word 1-0. The third transition gave me code word 0-1. The next one gave code word 0-0. And the one after that gave code word 0-1. I kind of ran out of space here, so we, we stopped our... Uh, uh, but we could keep going in this manner. And so now I have a way of tracing through time. Geez, that look good, except, you know, I don't have enough paper. <laughs> I don't have enough real estate. So is there another way that we can get this nice uh, flow of time, but in a compact way, so I don't have to uh, uh, go through this exponential growth in the number of elements in my, in my diagram? And there is indeed a way of doing that. So, so far, we've seen finite state machine, or we've taken that finite state machine and written in a tree hierarchy. So just to show, again, the parallels, before I would step through, and now I'm tracing through here. It's the exact same uh, manipulations. Okay, so now, what are we going to do with this tree? How am I going to make it more practical? And the way I'm going to make it more practical is doing something called a trellis. Trellis versus a tree. I don't know if you're familiar with the word trellis, what it is exactly, but it is, um, like I have one in my garden, a nice trellis, and it's got a lattice on it, like this, and then on this lattice I, you know, grow flowers. And this trellis is, you know, if I look at any point in it, you know, it's very structured, really repeats itself. 
And that is what we're going to do. We're going to build a trellis as a way of representing what is essentially the same information that was in the tree structure. But the trellis is, of course, more compact. But even more importantly, it's the trellis that lets us see what's going on in a decoder. So let's really get a good look at what is a trellis and how do we represent the finite state machine with the trellis. So here is a trellis for the encoder that we have been examining so far. And we can see, first of all, the first part of the trellis is a list of states. So each one of these points represent the state in the finite state machine. In our case, there are four states, A, B, C, and D. And of course, we have uh, different transitions that can happen. So these would be our valid transitions, either one with a solid line, excuse me, zero with a solid line, or one with a dotted line. And as I look at these transitions, just like I had before in my finite state machine, valid transitions, next to each one of the valid transitions, I write the code word that comes out from that transition. For instance, there's a transition from A to A, stays here in the same state, and the output then would be 0, 0. So this representation is a way where we can take the information, which is about a transition from A to A, A to B. And my tree, I was like constantly repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, but also expanding out. Here, I take this compact form where I have all the information, all of the tr valid transitions, all of the code words next to the valid transitions, and I just repeat it, tile it, one after the other. And that's how I build my trellis. So take those transitions, write them out once, and then just tile them one after the other. So let's take this trellis and see how we can take our data, which is listed here, and push it through this trellis and see how we can represent what happens going through this trellis. So this will be my data input. Down here, I'll keep track of my data output. So the first thing I do is I start at state A, and I input a 1. Great, that's the dotted line. I go from A to B, and the output is 1, 1, the code word. Now I'm at state B, and the next bit that comes in is a 1. So I go from state B to state D. Along the way, I output code word 0, 1. Up here at the top, I'm also keeping track as a function of time what data I'm putting in. So what I'm pointing to here, I'm just repeating it at the top here. So third data bit is a, a 0. And so I do the transition on the solid line. I go from state D to state C. Along the way, I output code word 0, 1. I'm at state C. I now have an input of 1. So I follow the dotted line, and that takes me from uh, uh, to state B. And along the way, I output code word 0, 0. I'm at state B. The next, word, the next bit in is a 1. And now I transition down to state D and output to the last code word along the way. So what's great about a trellis is I can see the development with time. I can see a path, a path through the trellis that represents the stream of data that was encoded. For just, the path is just the sequence. This sequence determines the path. So this is the path, this data, this path. When I have a path, you show me a path, I'll tell you what the data is. I see a path that has dotted, oh, that means it was a 1. I see a path, oh, that part is dotted, that was a 1. This is the solid part, that was a 0. And so what we're going to see is that this representation of the path easily gives me what was the data. There's like a one-to-one -one correspondence between a path and the data that was sent.